everyone. Marianne Cowan here, and I'm just waiting to see if anyone else pops on. It is Wednesday. Uh, don't ask me the date. I just know it's Wednesday. And we're continuing working with the Ornate Garden Suite, which is a new release set of products that will be coming out officially in the new annual catalog that goes live on June 3rd. But Stampin' Up! has decided to allow customers to purchase certain products in an early release. And if you're a demonstrator, then we were able to purchase them last month. So I'm just going to wait and see if anyone pops on. I hope everyone is doing well. It is getting to be long now, being in isolation. As much as I love my craft room. Luckily, it, the weather, well not today, we woke up to snow again. Yes, it's April and there was snow. It's all gone now, but I will say when I went for our dog walk in the woods this morning, it was quite pretty. But still, it was snow. I have flowers pushing up through the ground. Just some early ones, some of my bulbs, tulips and daffodils, and some of my day lilies, but they're pretty hardy, so I'm not really worried about them. Um, but yeah, my rhubarb's coming up. Hopefully it's okay, because nothing's really covered up anymore. So hopefully the weather will get a little warmer, and then I can get outside in my garden. We have a two-acre property here, so we have lots of space to roam around. So I don't feel as claustrophobic, but it is nice to be able to get outside. I think it's only like three degrees or two degrees here today. So, um, all right, I think maybe we'll get started. Today is Wednesday, so I'm going to call it Watercolor Wednesday because we're going to be doing a bit of watercoloring. And if you're interested in watercoloring, I did do a free online watercolor class last Saturday and so you'll find it down there in my Facebook feed and I'm also going to do a blog post about it I haven't actually done that but I realize not everyone is on Facebook so I will do a blog post about um, about that class but if you want to see it's absolutely free it's on um, Facebook if you just scroll down it was on Saturday and some people did pre-order the kit so you can see what a kit would look like if I sent you one in the mail and yeah. All right, so we're going to get started. And I'm just going to remind you about the Ornate Garden Suite. As I said, it's an early release. There are two bundles. And today we're going to be using quite a few of the products, actually. I'm just looking to see all the ones that we're going to be using. We're actually going to be using this cute little stamp right here. And we're going to be using the thank you stamp set which is really really pretty and so versatile it's got so many great sayings and we're going to be using the embossing folder as well as that's the stamp and then one of these dies I think that layering die and if you tune back in tomorrow we're going to be focusing on paper so this is the ornate garden specialty designer series paper coordinates with these colors and a new color called Bumblebee and so when um, you get this pack all our pack most of our packs this is specialty so it's um, a little fancier um, our papers are two-sided double-sided so this would be the front and this would be the back front and back and you get 12 sheets so you get two sheets of six designs so this is the paper. So tomorrow we're going to make some cards focusing on different papers. I'll give you a little sneak peek. This is going to be one of the cards. And here's that terracotta tile. It's a little bit deeper than Calypso Coral. And here's another little sneak peek for tomorrow. And again, that's the terracotta tile. And I've matched it with Old Olive. So that's what we're going to be working on tomorrow. And if you have limited funds right now and you just want something new in your craft room, this paper is really beautiful. And you'll see tomorrow how versatile it is and how many great things that you can do with it and using some things you probably already have in your craft room. So that's tomorrow. Thursday is going to be all about paper. And then Friday is going to be Fancy Friday. So I have a little bit of a fancier card. 
I'm just going to show you some of the pieces. Actually, that doesn't go there. So we're going to be making two cards. The other card features this element. So that's on Friday. All right, so for today, we're going to be doing watercoloring and we're going to be doing, um, I'm gonna show you how to do an image watercolored and how to use it, um, how to make an image with your stamp and blends. Okay, so I'm just going to remind you about the mini product shares that I'm offering. And you can get, all the information is on my blog post, so I'm just gonna give a quick recap here. They come in two color families brights or subtles and you'll get a sampling of all the borders if you order the layering one you'll get all the layered dies if you order the border one you'll get all the border dies you'll get three pieces embossed a couple of pieces two pieces actually not just a couple two pieces of the designer series paper everyone's going to get different ones um, and you'll get two cutout of colored cardstock. And if you order the brights, you'll get these, um, what are they called? Glitter enamel dots. Um, so you can order this in the brights or in the subtles. And the subtles is the exact same. So you can order it with the border set. The dies are just so beautiful. If you've been watching my blog I'll show you some cards we made we've made this week this is the one we'll be using tomorrow we used this one yesterday so again you'll get three embossed sheets some DSP these are the noble peacock rhinestones which I've used so much and then you'll either get the border ones that would be this set or if you want preferred to get the layering die cutouts you get these ones all right and if anyone's watching that is one of my regular customers, I am putting an order in later tonight if you need anything. Just let me know. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at watercoloring. And I'm just going to show you a couple of quick cards. Nothing really fancy. Well, actually, I think that one's kind of fancy. And like I said, you can go back and watch my watercoloring video where I go into depth a lot more on watercoloring techniques. So the first card is old olive regular card eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter folded in half then i have a layer of um crushed curry and i don't even know how big it is because i kind of went backwards three and a half by five and a half so it's the same height and it's that size because to be honest i have these little scraps in my package of scraps of paper and so I just thought oh that'd be perfect so I try to use up what I have and the way I store my scraps is I have a beautiful big shelf that my husband built me one Christmas so in each slot I will have old olive and then in the same slot I'll just have one of these plastic sleeves full of all my scraps so to be perfectly honest I looked in here and found this one I thought okay That'll work. And then I didn't like I, it needed something else, so I added the little piece of crushed curry. So make sure you use up your scraps. These scraps, you can cut out leaves with them. I don't waste anything. So that's how I store them. So this was embossed using the Scripty um, thick embossing folder. So let's just go ahead and put this part of the card together, and then I'll show you what I did for the watercoloring. So I'm just using some snail. I'm going to center this, making sure that it looks straight down there. That looks good. Then I'm going to add my scripty. So it's just going to have a little border on each side, but again, it's the same height. I don't know if these pieces are exactly cut straight, but. It's the good enough category. I could trim that off, but. All right, so what I've done is I've used watercolor paper. That's really important and I'll show you in a minute. I've watercolored, this is called no line watercoloring and I go in much more depth in the watercolor class. 
So I've stamped the image of that flower, which is from this set, but I stamped it in Sahara sand. So normally when you're using watercolor, you have to use stays on ink so that it doesn't bleed with the when you're using your inks. But I didn't want that darkness. So I did, I stamped it in Sahara sand and then I watercolored. And I'm gonna show you how to watercolor in a minute. Then I put a little bit of um, a background with blue and I'll show you that. Then I thought it would be cute with this little bee and the hello. But after I did it, I'm not really sure I'm crazy about it, but it's done. So, and these little layers are from the So Sweetly, Stitched So Sweetly dies. It's part of a bundle and the whole bundle is awesome. I've used that, you know, I've used that a lot. So then I, I cut out, I die cut the small rectangle and the one that's a little bit bigger out of vellum. So let's go ahead and put this, this is a really quick card. Well, it's because I did all the watercoloring before. Watercoloring is very therapeutic. I highly, highly recommend it. I'm gonna pop it up with some dimensionals. I saw something online the other day saying, how do you take your dimensionals out? All in one spot or randomly? I really never thought about it, to be honest. Okay, so let's just pop these off. Like I said, this is a really quick and easy card, but sometimes you don't need a lot for a card to be beautiful. Like I said, I think I would have skipped that had I done it again, but hmm, live and learn. This is twine from one of the double packs that we have in the catalog. This is old olive. I like to double my bows, so that's just two strands, and hopefully I cut it long enough because I was almost out of it. It's going to be tight. All right, that's good enough because I don't want a huge bow on there. And when you have a double bow, it just stands out a little bit more. And then I just go back and trim. I can hear a big plane going overhead. Oh, it's a helicopter. I want to say there's been a lot of helicopters around our area lately. I hope it's not transporting sick people. That makes me sad. Okay, a little glue dot. And I think I'll put it right about there. There. Okay, so I like it. I mean, like I said, I thought the bee would be so cute, but I'm not really sure. Anyways, it's cute. It's done. Oh, I forgot to show you the other cards we made this week. I'll do a whole little recap at the end. Okay, so then the next one, the design, is using, this is Pool Party, matched with soft suede. I love, love, love that combination. So this is the same stamp and I've stamped it three times and I've used my blends, my stamping blends. Just grab the two that I used. I used dark so saffron and light so saffron. And then I used, I think that was crumb cake actually, but you could use Sahara sand. So I've just used my pens, no water coloring, because this is regular white cardstock. I did go back with a little bit of a blue wash, and it does pull up the paper a little bit. The, the um, It's not designed for the, the ink to flow nicely like it does with watercolor paper. Then I've used, oh, one other thing I wanna tell you. I love when you get a new product and it coordinates beautiful, beautifully with an old product, not old, but. So I have these rectangle dies that I've had forever and they coordinate beautifully with these layering dies so for this one I've used this die and this rectangle die fits perfect who knew because it just looks so much prettier with the stitched edge and then this one the smaller one fits this one. So thank you Stampin' Up for making the products all coordinate. I just love it. And then this set comes with this long skinny one and a rectangle shaped one. 
because oftentimes you'll want this one for the background and then a color that you can stamp on. So anyways, I thought that was brilliant. I didn't think of it, so I'm allowed to say that. So then I took my thank you stamp set, which has thank you, so grateful, and thanks. And then this says thanks for everything. The other one says thanks, my friend. Thanks ever so much. Thanks for everything. Thanks. So here's a card. That's cute. Thanks. You're amazing. It's just an awesome set. So this one is part of the Ornate Thanks. And it actually coordinates with the border dies. So because they're introducing it new into the catalog, when you buy the bundle, you always get 10% off, which is great. And then I've paired it with the new ribbon that um, this is, instead of getting one roll of 10 yards of ribbon, you get two rolls and each roll has five yards. So that's awesome. So you get two colors that coordinate this obviously doesn't match that. And my test of a nice ribbon is if it ties nice bows. And I think this ribbon passes my test. All right, so I added that little bow there. So like I said, these ones were done with Stampin' Blends. So for the watercolor, for Watercolor Wednesday, I've taken the same elements. So this card is not put together. I'm just gonna sit down. So the back is crushed curry, same dimensions, regular card. Then I've gone and used the beautiful, I have it right here, Ornate Floral 3D Embossing Folder. So this is part of that big, huge suite, or you can buy it separately. All, all these products are available separately. It's just so pretty. So let's just go ahead and glue that on. I think I'm gonna use my multi-glue if it works. It's always hit or miss with this stuff. Oh, there we go. All right. Just because it has some ridges on it, it might make it easier. And I'm going to try to get it straight and centered. There we go. I'm a big fan of color on color. If you, ever, if, if you watched my other videos, you'll know. This is that same um, ornate layering die. This is early espresso. You can see the difference in the colors. This one is more subtle and soft, so it looks nicer with pool party. This one's a little more deep, so it looks nice with crushed curry. And then I've done thanks my friend, and I've done them both in early espresso, whereas here I did thanks, and then I did for everything in crushed curry. Just, I don't know, change it up a little bit. And here are my flowers. So, this one is cut out of watercolor paper. Stampin' Up! has a new watercolor paper, fluid watercolor paper. It's beautiful paper, it's actually cotton. Watercolor paper is expensive, but it allows you to do proper watercoloring. So it's worth it to get a pack and just be really careful how you use it, um, meaning not to waste it. So. The thing to remember with watercoloring is um, that if you're doing things side by side and one of color is still wet, it will bleed. You can see how it bled there, which is kind of okay because that's what a real flower would look like. I am using Aqua Painters. They come in a set of two. And if you look, this is the finer tip and this is the thicker tip. And this would be way too big for what we're using it for today. And this is the thin tip. So we're going to use this one. In the um, barrel of the pen is water. So you don't have to, like you normally would in watercolor, and dip and paint and dip and paint. You just give it a little bit of pressure and it comes out. On this card, very little pressure because we have very little space that we're watercoloring. And what I like to do is take my ink pad and I'll just show you because I already did it there. There's two ways you can do it. Some people just push like this and then use the lid of their ink pad. But what I like to do is get a little block, which acts as my um, little paint palette, and just push it into my ink pad. It's as simple as that. You can also use your ink refillers, and you can get a little um, actual watercolor, whatever this is called, palette, I guess. 
and then you can just put a couple of drops of your re-inker in and that's your watercolor simple simple all right so I went ahead and did the brown because I didn't want it to bleed quite as much so you just give a little bit of push from your water and make a little puddle I like to start from the inside and work out so I'm just gonna go around this because I don't really want it to bleed quite as much as the other one did there we go and now that I have a little border around it um, I'm a little freer to add my color and you can see how dark that one was so if you want to you can just push and add a little bit of water and then just move it around your flower watercolor dries lighter than what you see so just remember that it might look one color and then when you look at it later you think wow I thought it was a lot darker it's because it dries lighter if you get too much water on I'll just ooh, that was way too much ah, take a paper towel and just good thing paper towels are so absorbent and then just lift it up with your paper towel there that worked well so I don't even know if I have much color left on here so you just go around you I did the other two so you didn't have to sit here and watch me paint but it is very therapeutic I'm telling you you gotta try it you could use regular watercolors too it doesn't have to be our inks but of course I like our inks and I like how all the colors coordinate that's what I really like about our products so once you let this dry you could go back and add a little bit of um, darker color on where all the little lines are to give it some definition so I'm just not adding any water as I'm adding these ones all right I think that looks then you just to clean off your uh, aqua painter you just take a you can do it on your paper too but then your paper gets wet and it's easy to move your paint into it so now I'm going to take the green and do the stem and it's quite skinny so you just really I hope I'm in the camera I hope I was in the camera for all that little demo you really just drag your pen your painter up the stem and for watercolor it doesn't really matter if you go out of the lines if you see a real watercolor painting chances are the artist did the initial sketch in pencil and then you can oftentimes see the pencil mark and they don't stay right in the lines that's not a rule for watercoloring so here I'm just taking a little bit darker of the green now ideally you could wait oh this one's dry so let's try you could wait and come back later and give it a little more definition you don't want to get too much paint on here though it is paper after all and if you did it really light you'd still be able to see your ink marks through all right so that's good um, I did the brown already so the last thing I did is I took pool party or your lightest blue that you have I'm just gonna do this one in the lid and I probably did not need any more stuff in the lid so I want this to be a wash around my flowers so I'm just gonna get it really really wet and I'm gonna try it on my paper first yeah that's what I'm looking for and this one is really I just want to go around the edge there's no rhyme or reason to how you do this except I like it if I'm gonna have it a bit darker I want it a bit darker around my shape do not touch it exactly because you're going to spill all the other colors onto your background which is not the look you're going for so making sure that I don't touch what's in there kind of looks weird now but it'll look good when it's all done and I even like just go a little bit around I hope this is not boring you if you're doing it yourself it's fun and relaxing a little pack of, of um, aqua painters and then all your ink pads become paint it's worth it a little bit 
around. I'm trying to go all the same way with my brush because sometimes you can see the brush strokes. All right, there, I like that. Clean my brush, put the lid back on. The white lid is the small one and the blue lid is the blue one. I, has to, I had to ask someone in my class who just got theirs because I use mine for classes. So you can imagine the lids get all over the place. So you can see the th difference in my, in my three flowers. This one did bleed out a little bit, but that's actually more realistic looking than these ones. Anyways, I think it's cute. All right, we're done with this. So we have our base. We have our early espresso layering. And I think I want to put this one straight on. So I'm hoping I'm not going to smudge it. And my snail. You can take your heat tool and dry it a little bit, but I don't want this video to be too long. I'm going to put it on flat because I'm going to pop this one up. And you'll see that it fits in perfectly. It's almost like it was designed to fit. All right, I like that. So I thought I would, instead of a bow, this is my idea, so we'll see if I like it. I'll put a little, I don't know what that's called, ribbon. I think of it as the ribbon of hope. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so now I have to remember exactly where that was. I'm going to use glue dots for this little process. So I'm going to glue dot these together. And then I'm going to glue dot this to where I want it on here. And it might require me going back and looking. Let's put this on first. So I'm going to pop it up with dimensionals because I need to know exactly where to put my same. So I guess if you ask how I take my dimensionals off, I start in the middle and then I just work my way around. And then every so often I'll need an edge piece, so I'll just grab one. This is fairly big, so I use six. Um, so we'll just pull these off. I hope you guys are joining me on my mission to make a card, send a card. I know a lot of cards I send for Easter, people are just getting today, so a bit late, but... I can tell they're appreciate, are appreciating receiving them in the mail. Okay, I'm going to put a little higher than center. Just because I'm going to have my little greeting on the bottom. Okay. So this is going to go here. I want this turned a little bit more. Yeah, I like that better. Now... This side is going to need a little dimensional. This side is going to need to get glued flat. So I'm actually going to use glue dots because I don't want to run a tape runner along that. And we'll see if that'll work. My plans don't always work, believe it or not. So this one, I'm going to put a dimensional right here in the corner. And I may need to go back and add another one. I'm not really sure. All right. Now we don't want it going too crazy. Oh well. Sometimes I th overthink things. There, that's good enough. We could trim that off a little bit, but I will just fold it to put it in the envelope. Okay, I don't know about that ribbon, but anyways. All right, so here's our cards for today. We did two of these similar thanks. And then this cute one with the single flower. I guess we can spread out this way. So that's today's cards. And it just shows you the versatility of this one single little stamp. I've used it here, I've used it in a couple of ways. You can watercolor, you can use your blends, um, so many different things that you can do with it. And then let me just review some of the other cards that we've made this week. So I'll just leave these ones over here. So yesterday we used the border and we made this cute little blue one and the instructions are on my website now okay oh jeez. <laughs> okay so this one 
had the edge lift up. I was trying to lift the edge up, but the whole card opens like this. That was funny. All right, so these two, the instructions are on my blog. This one I used the leftover piece of this um, embossed sheet from the day before. All right, I just looked out my window and there's a snow blizzard happening right now. That is not amusing me. All right, so those two. Now I put them all in one blog post, but um, you'll be able to figure them out. So those two are on the blog post. And then the day before that, we did these two. So again, focusing on the embossing folder and a couple of the layering dies. And I found it so cool that this and this are the same die, but it looks bigger here because I've framed it around. Again, that perfectly sized um, rectangle stitched uh, layering die. I think that's the official name. There I've got, thanks my friend, a little um, noble, per noble rhinestones, which are beautiful colors. Here I've colored pearls using my blends. Really pretty, I think. It's supposed to be raining, not snowing. It says life showers. Oh well, the world's gone crazy. And then this one I made on the weekend. So it uses the border again. Beautiful, beautiful. And when I saw this border, it reminded me of this paper, which is from the best dressed um, designer series paper, paper pack. And then I've just added some little leaves and fern, fern stuff, but I've kept it pretty monochromatic in just purples and whites. All right, so I hope you're enjoying my week of ornate garden. I can never remember the name. What's it called? Ornate Garden Suite. Mm -hmm. So as I said, uh, we focused on some of the borders, some of the die, uh, layering dies. And then tomorrow, we're going to be focusing on the paper. So I'm going to show you, we'll make two cards together, but I'll show you like five or six that I've already made using the designer series paper and how versatile it is. And just a little tip, if you have the daisy punch that, I don't know, I want to say the big daisy punch came out maybe two years ago. And so we have two now, a regular, well, it's called the daisy punch and then a medium daisy punch. So we're going to use it to coordinate with this paper because, hey, look, it's daisies. And actually my daisies are starting to pop up in the garden. So I hope it's not too early for them. But uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna, no, that's good. I think we can see all the cards here. So thank you for joining me today. I'm just seeing someone popping on. Hi, Lisa. So, um, yeah. Oh, thank you. She said her style is, my style is her style. I, I do find that you find demonstrators who have a style similar to yours. And I tell that to the girls that come to card class. Um, like, this is kind of how I design. So if you like my designs, then you'll like making my cards. But um, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. Sometimes I think I'm talking to myself here. But um, anyway, so tomorrow we're going to focus on the paper and have some more cute projects for you. Um, the ones that we made today will be on my blog later today. And these ones are all on my blog. My blog is MarianneCowan.com. And I do have an ordering special for the, um, the bundles and actually the product mini shares. So all the information is on my blog if you want to look that up. All right, so that's it for me today. Hopefully, Lisa will be able to catch the replay. I'll post it as soon as I get off here. And don't forget to join me in my mission to make a card, send a card. I hope you're having a great day. And I hope when I talk to you just tomorrow, I'm not going to tell you that it's snowing outside. All right, thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Stay safe.